In a world where a mix of culture influences the abundance of our differences, we thrive to find a common ground, a desire to be in unison with each other. That desire is echoed by our need to a fulfilling life, a life that speaks of our vision coming to reality and a life that reflects our greatness. Whoever you are, wherever you may be, empowering yourself means allowing you to be who you are destined to be. You are irreplaceable. The festive time of year has arrived and it's party time. This is the time of year full of holiday fun, vacations, the beach, relaxation, shopping, presents, and too much lovely food. But most importantly, it is the fun time with family and friends. Here in the Philippines, it is very common to have loved ones away overseas during the holiday season. In this episode, we will be looking at how to enjoy the holiday season in spite of having loved ones away overseas. Sometimes in life, situations force us to spend time away from those that we love, whether it's a job overseas or study overseas. Did you know that how we respond to these times can either positively or negatively direct the course of our life? What happens for you when you spend time away from loved ones? Do you get bored? Do you feel lost without them? Or do you not know what to do with your time? Do you feel the temptation to push the pause button on your life and just wait around for them to return? Or do you lack the motivation to pursue a goal unless you have a fan club to cheer you along? Or do you find that you just don't function as well without them around? Do you feel like you need them there and reliant on them to guide your decisions and actions? Loved ones can greatly enhance our lives. However, they do not determine or define our life value. When we become too focused on loved ones, we forget about our own potential as we become so focused on theirs. When we rely on their strength, we forget to discover and develop our own talents. Did you know that you have talents and you can achieve your own success? Hi, I'm Katie and it's time for you to know that you are truly, truly irreplaceable. We have all been designed in ways that make us one of a kind and stand out from others. Every one of us has talents which make us irreplaceable. Our Creator has deliberately given us these talents so that we can complement and encourage each other in the context of family and community. He has given us these gifts so that we can see increase and abundance in our community of Cebu. But what happens when we are away from those that we rely on? What happens when we are away from our loved ones? Did you know that even in these moments, even in these times, you can live your potential and you can discover your talents and you can find fulfillment in your life. Today is about maximizing the assets at your disposal. Today you discover that you play the biggest role in shaping your success. With me today is Brian Marquez and it's so exciting to have him here with us today. Um, he has been working overseas for about three years and he's just arrived back in Cebu and he's been working as a head nurse in the emergency department. Can you believe that? Such a stressful environment, yet he's the head nurse. Um, and that has been in the Middle East. So he has a lot of experience and a lot of talents that we can learn from that can really help us today and we can really learn about how we can find fulfillment even if we're away from those that we love and those that we rely on. So, Brian. Hi, Katie. 
How does it feel to be back in Cebu after three years? Well, um, after three months in Qatar, well, I just had my, um, I got my allergy back. I had cough because I just um, um, adjusting with the, with, with the environment. So now I'm okay. I'm back with my family. Um, thanks God that um, I'm with my family right now. I'm sure there's lots that you would have missed about Cebu. Yes, the food. The food, um, because in the Middle East, we are not allowed to eat um, pork. So once I arrived here in the Philippines, I, um, in the airport, I asked my father to buy lechon and baboy. <laughs> so that's it. So I really miss the food here in the Philippines, specifically in Cebu. So viewers in Cebu, how would you handle not having lechon for three years? Well, that, that, is, that is a lot of time not to be having lechon. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. imagine a, um, eating a beef. Just imagine that this is a lechon or a, um, a pork, so that it would, um, it would, um, what's this, uh, fulfill my, my, my taste or my, my taste buds for, mm. for craving lechon. Cool. And um, what did you really enjoy about having the opportunity to, you know, to work abroad, to uh, work overseas? Well, the main reason why we went abroad or I went abroad is to become financially stable. If you if you will be working there, you can buy anything you want mm -hmm. for yourself, because um, all the gadgets you want you can buy you can buy those things. Yeah. And the food itself it's so cheap, rather than comparing to comparing here in the Philippines. And I think that's a challenge of a lot of you know people here in Cebu. That's why we're talking about that. Is you know you can be very talented you know here as a Cebuano have lots of qualifications, but the problem is having enough finance to support your family and yeah. a classic example of this is Brian and um, his family he's had to work overseas in order to support them and um, so I guess for you what has the benefits been to your family um, in terms of finances of you working overseas? Well um, aside from I, I can mm. provide them financially um, at that time, before, before I went abroad, we were not close to my parents, but when I went there, um, we, I mean, we always communicate with each other, mm -hmm. and it's my, it's my first time to say I love you to my parents, oh, wow. yeah, so definitely those, um, those are, um, those are, um, those are the things that, um, it enhanced me so much, Wh wherein I was, I was able to um, to become closer to my family, so I think that's more important if you are away from them. That's right. Yeah, and it's kind of a paradox. I mean, I've actually you know experienced the same thing. You think, oh, it's harder to be close with loved ones when you're overseas, but it's amazing that you know when you're away from loved ones, you're forced to work more on the communication side of things, which can actually strengthen your relationships more. And I've I've seen that also in my relationships. So. How awesome is that, that even though you're away from loved ones, you can yeah. still find fulfillment in those um, very relationships. Yes. And um, I guess for you, what opportunities did you have to really discover your talents and discover your potential by being away from loved ones and working as a nurse yeah. um, in the Middle East? Because I remember yesterday, it was so cool, like you were mentioning how you love to serve people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's your talent. Your talent yeah. is really serving and caring for people as a nurse. Yes. Yeah. Um, as a nurse, mm -hmm. our, our main role is to serve people. Mm -hmm. And we are glad that um, we could, I mean, aside from serving our, I mean, aside from serving Filipino, we are also given opportunity to serve other people like the Muslim um, the Muslim people, um, other religion. Mm -hmm. So, if you work in the Middle East, mm -hmm. you should um, adapt the environment. You should know on how to set your um, limitation. I mean, you should know. You should know also on how to respect the religion, mm -hmm. and also their um, this um, their beliefs. So it's important for us to know about those things because, I mean, you're working abroad, so. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you need to adjust yourself mm -hmm. because this is not an ordinary country um, comparing here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So it's a big, it's a big responsibility if you'll be working there. 
because um, it's not easy, um, mm. especially the communication. Mm. You need to you need to enhance um, you need to enhance also your um, the way you communicate the way you communicate with them. Mm -hmm. So if I'm hearing correctly, what you're saying is some of the talents you've discovered from being overseas is that you're very adaptable, yeah. um, that you're very responsible and that you're very open to learning. And yes. being open to learning from their culture has actually um, opened up other opportunities for you in terms of the work and um, your work as a nurse. What's your favorite part of the job as a nurse? If you were to picture your life back in the Middle East at the hospital there, what was your favorite part? Well, the, my favorite part is um, if my patient will say thank you, mm -hmm. or in Arabic, we, they, they say to you, shukran. Well, for us, it's fulfillment. So definitely, um, it's not about money, it's about um, fulfillment. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if they will say thank you to you, for sure, you, um, they really glad your services. Mm -hmm. They really glad you, um, the service that you provide to them. So you love really spending that time with people? Yes, mm. yes, definitely. And I think that's what's great about our culture here in Cebu is we're very good at being hospitable and understanding different cultures and not pressuring other people. So therefore we can really find fulfillment if the situation demands that, you know, we work overseas. Now we're going to ask Brian about some tips for handling the Christmas season away from loved ones. Um, so, Brian, what did your Christmas look like when you were in the Middle East? Well, my first Christmas in Saudi Arabia was, I mean, that's the worst Christmas. Mm. Why? Because December 13, I, received, uh, I was on duty at that time. Mm -hmm. I received a call from my parents, my, mo my mother, I'm sorry. And she told me that, um, actually, I know, I know before, I mean, the reason why I went um, abroad mm. is to give financial support to my sister. And her name is Melanie Marquez, and not the actress, but mm. my sister. Um, December 13, I received a call from my mother that my sister died. And she died due to um, renal, um, kidney failure. So, I mean, here in the Philippines, we are celebrating this, um, um, what's this, Mesa, Misa de, Gal Misa de Galio. Mm. So... Definitely, um, our house is beside, um, this is a church, beside that, that's my house. Mm -hmm. So every time the people um, w walking, walking, I mean, going to the church, mm -hmm. they saw my house that um, my sister lay, um, my sister was, in, I mean, in the coffin. Mm -hmm. So that's why, um, every, um, December, December 23, I mean, mm -hmm. that was the funeral of my sister, 24. I just greeted my parents. Um, I just say to them, thank you for loving me. This is while you were overseas? Yes. Mm. That was my first Christmas there. Mm. And I just told them, thank you for loving me, although my sister is not here. I will, I will, I will double up my, um, mm. my, myself to be with you because I'm, I'm alone. Mm. So I told them, um, don't worry, I'll be with you forever. Um, I'll, be, will, I'll be with you, I'll, I'll be, will, will be, I will be your nurse forever. Aww. So for me, um, 2007, that was the worst Christmas I had. Mm. So after, um, doing, after calling them or after doing the Skype, I just... Um, so Skype played a yeah. big role in staying yes. connected yes. with your family during the The Christmas. new technology right now is a big help for us abroad. I mean, the, for, um, the overseas workers. Mm. And I'm so sorry about your loss it's just a testament to you know what an overcoming person you are that you're able to continue working overseas in spite of that tragedy and you know still connect yeah. with your loved ones over Skype and stay connected and I think I remember you saying yesterday that you also had a Christmas dinner yeah, with friends at your place mm -hmm. and with other Filipinos so that you still have a reminder of, of home yes um, then um, most of my friends there knows that um, uh, I, I am in the griefing process. Mm. So they called me and they, they told me that, oh, come, come to my room, then we just celebrate a small, um, small Christmas, um, uh, what's a small preparation for Christmas. So we just had um, the chicken. No pork, unfortunately. No pork, yeah, chicken and fish, cake, um, ice creams. This small preparation for Christmas, just to um, fulfill our needs. Mm. 
which is important so you um, can still be reminded of home um, even though there's been a lot of tragedy at home. I guess there's some other viewers who may experience having a loved one die while they're overseas mm -hmm. and at the same time be away from loved ones at Christmas. What advice would you give to them if they're going through a similar situation to well, they, you? Yeah, they need to be strong. Mm. So all you need is um, you need to be strong for your family. Mm -hmm. You need to think that I mean, this is only a trials given by the God, given by God. Mm -hmm. Then all you need is to move on to the next chapter of life. And it's interesting you talk about this because in our previous episode, we looked at overcoming obstacles in life and mm -hmm. how we do that is by learning from everything in life, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's a tragedy, that God can use any situation that happens in our life for our good, to move so. us forward, to to live the plans and the potential that he has for us even though some things we don't understand like why a good person passes away why a loved one passes away we never can understand that but all we can do is focus on what we can do and um, to, to move through the challenge although there'll always be that grief there but all we can do is focus on what's good about our lives and what we learned from that loved yeah. one who passed away that's helped our lives and move forward to live the potential that we have. And that's amazing how, in spite of those tragedies, you are a very successful nurse. I mean, it's really intense being a head nurse in an emergency department. So it's amazing at how those personal tragedy experiences helped you to be an amazing nurse, a lead nurse, a nurse that's heading up the whole nursing team on the emergency department. And I know that's very stressful because my dad's a doctor and he works in an emergency department and it's very intense. So yeah. well done on that, Brian. Um, I've really learned a lot from your story about, you know, continuing on in spite of any challenge. And if we were going to just um, say something to encourage our viewers, would you like to say something to the camera to encourage them? Yeah. Well, to all... Filipino workers who work abroad, all you need to do is um, you need to be strong for your family and I mean there's, there's so many ways for us to communicate our parents here, I mean our loved ones here in the Philippines. You can do Skyping, you can do Facebook, you can do anything you want. Um, for me, the, the, um, the learning that I had in my life is um, I learned how to say I love you to my parents mm. and it's very important to say that every day because once you say them I love you I mean you will be you will get closer to them and that's it mm. Wow thank you Brian for encouraging our viewers and thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. You've only just arrived back in Cebu and you're already sharing yeah. your experiences, some of your heartaches and some of your trials. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Daghang salamat. Daghang salamat. And when we return, a letter sender shares the story of their struggle during the Christmas season, during the Christmas period, um, with their family, with their loved ones. So be sure to stay around. That's coming up right next here on An Irreplaceable You with me, Coach Katie.